Hi there, my name is Jeff Sackman. I run a GMAT website called gmathacks.com and I've written a comprehensive textbook for the GMAT math section called Total GMAT Math. What I want to cover in this video is various ways of combining exponents. Now the term combining exponents isn't a technical term, it covers a lot of different techniques. All these techniques are important. They're things that a lot of students seem to be missing and it's something that the GMAT math section loves to test. You'll see exponents show up in a variety of contexts. The questions don't necessarily look very hard, but they can be very tricky, especially if you don't know these basic skills. So we're going to talk about three or four different ways of combining exponents, depending on the way they're presented to you. The first ones are all going to assume that we have the same base. So let's say you're looking at something like 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 5th. When I say the same base, I'm referring to the 2. If we have 2 to the 4th times 3 to the 5th, then it gets more complicated. There's not a lot of exponent magic we can do to simplify things. So let's say we have 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 5th. Same base, what we do, we add the exponents. So 2 to the 4 plus 5 power, or 2 to the 9th. That's all there is to it. And remember that works only when the bases to the exponents are multiplied together. This is the simplest thing we're going to talk about today, but it's something that students forget all the time. They make more complicated multiplying exponents on the same base, add the exponents. That's all there is to it. Now the next step is when you have an exponent raised to another exponent. So let's say you have 2 to the 4th, and that whole expression is raised to the 5th. Now, this isn't something that you're going to see too often as literally part of a GMAT question, but it's a step that might come up when you're working something out. So, again, this is something that you need to have rock solid in your mind, memorized. A power to a power means the base stays the same and you multiply the powers. Power to a power, multiply the powers. So, in this case, 4 times 5 gives us 2 to the 20th. So, quick recap. Multiplying terms, raise to different exponents, add the exponents. Power to a power, multiply the exponents. Those are, you are your two basic rules. A lot of other important things flow from there. So make sure these are memorized. Make sure you know exactly how and when to apply them on the GMAT. Now this is where it starts getting a little more confusing. One thing you'll see on more difficult questions is instead of multiplying 2 to the 4th and 2 to the 5th, let's say we're adding them. There's no concrete rule to combine them. We can't add the exponents, we can't multiply the exponents, but sometimes you'll want to simplify this expression. So, here's what you do. This case, 2 to the 5th the is the same as 2 to the 4 plus 1. I'm just changing the 5 to a 4 plus 1. And notice now we're going backwards from the rule I just taught you. Instead of combining 2 to the 4th and 2 to the 1st, we are separating 2 to the 4 plus 1 into 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 1st. Pay close attention to that step. That's something a lot of students never really grasp, and it's very important for working through some of these more complicated questions. So 2 to the 5th can become 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 1st. So now, I'll write in this 2 to the 4th that I left out initially. So this initial expression we were given simplifies to 2 to the 4th plus 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 1st. Now we just apply some basic algebra. We factor out the 2 to the 4th. There's a 2 to the 4th in both terms. When we divide this term by 2 to the 4th, we're left with 1. When we divide this term by 2 to the 4th, we're left with 2 to the 1 or 2. So simplify the whole thing, we get 2 to the 4th times 3. Now depending on the situation, the question, what you're looking for, I'm not at all sure that 2 to the 4th times 3 is a huge improvement over 2 to the 4th plus 2 to the 5th. Sometimes it will be, sometimes it won't be. It'll take practice to get a sense of when it's worth going through these steps. But this type of expression, 2 to the 4th plus 2 to the 5th, or x to the 6th plus x to the 9th, all sorts of things like that, comes up an awful lot on more difficult GMAT questions, and you need to be able to manipulate them in this way. So 
Take note of this, practice these skills, make sure you understand how to work backwards from two to the fifth to two to the fourth times two to the first. And then we're gonna move on to one last step. Again, we're going to be applying some of these rules backwards and we're going to be expanding our powers to more different exponent scenarios. So let's say you've got a situation like this. You wanna combine two to the third times four squared. They aren't very big numbers, so if you absolutely had to, you could probably do it with pen and paper, just figure out two times two times two times four times four. But for today's purposes, we're gonna do it the abstract, more thorough way. So everything I've said before presupposes that the bases are the same. Now, the bases aren't the same. So do we just give up? Hopefully we don't just give up. The key here is to make the bases the same. So even though two and four are different, we are able to change four to the second so that instead of having a base of four, it has a base of two. So thinking in those terms, four is the same as two squared, basic arithmetic. So we're just gonna substitute this four with a two squared. So now we can go back to one of our earlier rules. Remember if we have a power to a power, we multiply those powers. So now we have two to the third times two to the fourth. Again, we get back to the earlier rules. It's starting to look a little more familiar. Two to the third times two to the fourth. We add the exponents. We get two to the seventh. So even though these had different bases, we were able to convert one of the bases and solve the problem. As you can probably figure out, looking at what we just did here, this isn't gonna work every time. If this were five squared or seven squared or nine squared instead of four, we'd have a problem. The whole thing is based on being able to convert this number, the four, into a base that's the same as this one. So the most common numbers you're gonna see are, on the GMAT anyway, will be the smaller powers of two, like four, eight, 16, or maybe the smaller powers of three. Three squared is nine, three cubed is 23. Rarely will the, will the numbers get much bigger than that, because at that point they start getting pretty unwieldy, and the GMAT knows you don't have a calculator and you don't have all day. So we've gone through a lot of techniques for com combining and simplifying exponents, all of these, even though I was able to get them into a short video, all of these are very powerful, very important, and I can virtually guarantee you that when you sit for the GMAT math section, you are going to have the opportunity to apply some of them. So study up. There's more articles about exponents on my website, gmathacks.com. Also check out my math textbook, Total GMAT Math, and I'll see you next time.